Hi folks, so today is March 31st and I want to talk about a few things. I want to talk about um, some changes we're going to put in operationally by the end of this week. But I want to start with um, a little more explanation of where we are today and um, just to be super clear about where we are. Um, <clears throat> number one, if you leave campus for any reason, even for a medically necessary uh, appointment, you need to self-quarantine in your apartment for 14 days. That means um, there, if you are in the uh, common area on your way outdoors, you need to be wearing a mask. If you are outdoors, uh, you don't need to wear the mask, but you can't be within six feet of anyone. You can't stop and have a conversation. Quarantining means staying away from other people. It's not about punishment. It is about protection and about keeping the virus out of our campus. Um, <clears throat> we've had a number of questions about visitors and about family. Uh, we've had some, some creativity. Um, folks who have creatively found ways to take a walk with their family or um, have their family wanting to come and sit outside and maybe have a meal with them. That's not okay right now. Uh, we need to do everything we can uh, to keep any outside germs, anything from the outside out of our campuses. This is, um, you know, I normally, I love creativity. I love when you guys try to outsmart me in some way or outthink me in some way. Uh, now's not the time for that. This is serious. Um, this is the time for us to follow not just <clears throat> the letter of the law, but the spirit of the law. And the spirit of the law right now is keep us apart from everyone else who does not have to be on our campus. Every time we run the risk, every time somebody new comes into our campus, <clears throat> we run the risk of bringing the germ, we run the risk of bringing the virus on our campus. And um, that is what we want to avoid for you, for your health and safety, for your neighbor's health and safety, for our staff's health and safety. And I'll, I'll tell you two uh, little stories. This, this video might be a little long, so you might want to settle in and <clears throat> get a drink. Um, but so tomorrow, I don't know if you can see this. This is my daughter, Megan. She's, uh, she turns 23 tomorrow. She was born on the April 1st blizzard in 1997. And she is living in Spain now. She's teaching there. And she's in lockdown. And lockdown in Spain means she hasn't left her apartment in almost three weeks. And she says to me, Mom, don't let it get that bad there. The way for it to not get that bad here is for us to not have positive cases on our campus. So we need to do everything we can to keep our campuses clean and healthy for as long as we possibly can. And I want you to understand that our, our team, our staff, are working at that 100% of their time um, non-stop, 24-7. It only works if you do your part. And you doing your part means um, <clears throat> understand how important this is, understand that there's no skirting the rules, understand that it does mean you, understand it does mean your family. We just, we can't mess around with this. I have spent, I, I have called and talked with every single one of my friends in this industry. Um, around the country, just trying to get input and advice from folks who who are in geographic regions that might be a little more advanced than us. <clears throat> and the best bit of advice I got was from a CEO in uh, the Washington State area who said, really, their independent living residents didn't take it seriously enough in the beginning, and now they have five positive cases in their independent side. We don't want that. Don't do that to yourself or to others. Don't take any risks right now. Just keep it tight and then make it tighter. Keep a six foot distance, physical distance between you and others. Keep a six foot physical distance between you and our staff. If you see our staff um, <clears throat> scooching together, remind them. If you see your friends scooching together, remind them too. We're gonna be better and tougher and stronger about this because everything we can do to keep our communities free of the virus, we are gonna do. 
even if that means um, you get a little mad, even if it means it's a little less fun, every little sacrifice we make right now will be worth it if it gets us one day further, one day further, without having a, a positive COVID case in our communities. So um, to that end, uh, we're going to make some changes operationally. <clears throat> By the end of the week, um, we are going to discontinue in apartment um, uh, housekeeping. And we're doing that for a variety of reasons. Number one is we want to limit the amount of time or any of the, the occasions where one of our staff members is in your personal apartment space. It Number two, it's hard to keep six foot distance when we're cleaning your apartment if you are um, there. And number three, by not doing the in-apartment cleanings, it allows us to redeploy our housekeeping staff into other high-touch cleaning areas, common areas, and into other areas, other roles within the community that so that we can have fewer staff on site. And that's our goal. Fewer people on site, um, fewer opportunities for anyone who has to live outside of these walls to bring um, any, any um, virus in. That's our whole goal. It is all about keeping you healthy and safe, and it only works <clears throat> if you do your part. So housekeeping um, will, will change by the end of this week. Groceries. Um, we have spent uh, the last couple of weeks really stocking up on what we have in our community and country stores. Um, I think right now uh, it's fair to say we have everything you need in there. We are going to discontinue the personal shopping in terms of um, going out and getting you your um, specific items. But please do continue to let us know items you want. When you do that, what we will do is try to source them through our purveyors or through some bulk uh, shopping. And that will we'll then take those and sell that, those items in the country store. So we'll kind of stock them in the country store or the community store. That allows us fewer people going out into the community and then bringing things back in. It allows us to try to use our regular purveyors who are already bringing um, items here. It allows us to reduce the risk, and that's what we're all about right now. <clears throat> um, preparedness. Uh, a number of you have asked, what will we do if we have a positive case? And um, even though you know, I would emphasize we're doing everything we can to keep the virus out. Math does suggest with the way community spread is growing in New Hampshire, the number of cases are growing, um, <clears throat> that we have to prepare ourselves for the fact that it may be an eventuality. But everything we can do to keep that from happening or delay that from happening is exactly what we want to be doing. If we did have a positive case, um, there is a process by which Department of Public Health would notify us. There would be, if this was a case on the um, independent side, there would be isolation, obviously, for the affected resident and their spouse, if that was the case. <clears throat> Most likely, the entire community would be in isolation for a period of time to allow us to do um, what they call contact tracing. So understanding who that person may have come in contact with over the course of the previous 14 days and allow us to do additional deep cleaning of all common areas. So sort of a, you know, a, a head to toe kind of cleaning um, to ensure that the common areas were as safe as humanly possible. At that point in time, we could continue to back off restrictions, but a positive case means less freedom. If the positive case is in the healthcare center, um, the good news there, the bad news is that it's in our healthcare center. Uh, the good news is that our nurses and nurses aides are used to um, quarantine. They have a certain set of procedures um, that includes essentially that no one comes in and out other than nurses and nurses aides. And, the, and that healthcare staff handles all of the duties, including housekeeping and food delivery. We will very likely by the end of this week go to what we call universal masking. Uh, in the healthcare centers. That will mean that um, all of our healthcare staff will be masked um, for their entire shift. The reason we don't do that 
uh, full campus wide is that there is a global shortage of masks. Um, we just don't have the, the product and the product doesn't exist to be able to do that for everyone. We will, con we will start and continue to use the cloth masks for some of our staff that have to be in closer contact with um, either other residents or other residents or other staff. But the message really is that if we are six feet apart, you don't need to be masked. So we need to do everything we can to remember what six feet is. Six feet is a, a tall man. So, you know, lay a tall man down and stay in between those. Or stay on the other side of his head and his feet. Um, the idea of masking um, would be great if it existed. Right now, that amount of, and the ability to source that amount of masks doesn't exist for us. We're doing everything we can. We are fortunate and in better uh, situation than many, many communities, um, but it's still not enough to deal with if we had an outbreak <clears throat> and if we have um, positive cases. So please understand that six foot rule, it's not a suggestion um, and it's not a joke. It's a, it's a rule and it's for purpose. The other thing I'd like to say is, um, you know, I know how hard this is. We've had people ask, like, why couldn't my family come and just walk on the campus with me and we'll stay six feet apart and we'll, um, we won't, you know, we won't touch one another. And, um, <clears throat> and the reality is um, we just can't take that risk. I got to tell you, I'm not even that nice as a mother, but if my kids were here, I would hug them. I would touch them. I'd, I'd be so drawn to that. And I know that's what you're going to have the same challenges with your own family. It's not worth it right now. Right now, what we need to do is make the sacrifices for yourself, for your friends, for your neighbors, and for our staff. Our staff is coming in here every day. They are putting themselves at risk by being out, by having a job that is considered essential to cook for you, to clean for you, to care for you, our housekeepers, our, our dining staff, our healthcare staff, our front desk, our screeners, our maintenance staff, everyone in our admin side, they are 100% committed to keeping you healthy, safe, and strong. And you need to be doing the same thing for them. So make the sacrifices for now. Um, I'm gonna make an additional video today for our, our staff. And I'm going to make a third video today for your family. And I'm going to say the same thing. As much as you want to be around your family right now, we want to make sure you can be around your family when this is over. And for that to happen, you got to stay healthy. And for you to stay healthy, you have to make these sacrifices now. So um, I know you want to. I know it's hard. I know the adjustment is difficult. Um, it will be more difficult when we tighten the circle more and more, but the control will leave our hands if and when we have a positive case, because it really, at that point, we really have to rein things in as much as humanly possible. Don't let us get there. Do everything you can while we're doing everything we can to keep that from happening. And I'll just, I'll end with this. <clears throat> and I kind of stole this from one of my friends, but it's the truth. Every crisis has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And we're past the beginning, and this is going to be a while. You know, it's going to be a slog, and it's not going to be fun. But we have one another. You have community. You are safe. Your needs will be met. And you have people to be around. And you have people to be around who, are, who love you and who are here for you. We will get through this. We will eventually get to the end. And when we get to the end, we'll have done that successfully because we all made the sacrifices we needed to. So be a part of that, commit to that, and, um, and make good choices. So we'll see you on the other side. Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. Keep six feet apart. Thank you.